What if I told you that some of your favorite cartoons hide dark secrets deeper than any ocean you could imagine? This is the weird side of cartoons, where nostalgia meets speculation. Today we're going to go over some of these theories or creepypastas, whatever you want to call it, try to see if any of these are true or if they're just outright lies. Now this is actually the second video I've done of these, so if you want to check out the first one, I'll link it somewhere. Dead Bart. Now, Dead Bart is a creepypasta about a lost episode regarding the character Bart from The Simpsons. Now, the story claims that the unseen footage of the series was actually given to the witness who found this by Matt Groening himself, who created The Simpsons. After he got this, he immediately got nervous about hearing about the mystery episode, and I'm going to go over the post by K.I. Simpson, which is supposedly the original creepypasta. Now, the author begins the story talking about how Fox has a weird way of counting Simpsons episodes making them inconsistent. The author would begin to go into detail of how strange Matt Groening would act during the production of the first season of the show, and how mentioning this to anyone who actually works on The Simpsons results in them getting very angry and forbidding you to ever even mention it to Matt Groening. The story would move on to the author at a fan event and how he was able to get the episode, basically get his hands on it. The author managed to follow Matt after he spoke to the crowd and eventually had a chance to talk to him alone as he was leaving the building. He didn't seem too upset that the author had followed him as he was expecting a typical encounter with an obsessed fan. Basically, he was just thinking this guy was obsessed with him, you know. Tons of people love The Simpsons, so I'm sure this guy gets approached all the time. Now, when the author mentioned the lost episode though, all color drained from Matt's face and he started to tremble. When the author asked for details on the episode, Matt grabbed a piece of paper and wrote down the website address for the episode on it. When the author got home and started downloading the episode, he experienced a really bad computer virus that ended up forcing him to reboot the entire computer. And when the author started the episode, nothing actually seemed to be weird about it. It was just trash animation apparently, very poor. When the intro ended and the actual episode started, everyone acted differently than how their original counterparts from the show would have acted. Homer was more angry, Marge was depressed, Lisa was more anxious, and Bart had a genuine hatred for his family. Now, the family was getting onto a plane that was going to an unknown location, Bart being himself was goofing around on the plane, obviously, until he accidentally broke a window on the plane, causing him to get sucked out of it. Apparently this is all shown. When Bart hit the ground, his body was so realistic that you couldn't tell it was Bart. It then cut to a family back at home, sitting at the kitchen table, crying. But the crying was actually realistic and sounded like it was full of pain. Like, like somebody really crying, you know what I mean? Imagine somebody really losing their family member. Like that type of crying, like real shit. And apparently this crying went on for two entire acts. The second acts of them crying took place two whole years after Bart's death was supposed to happen. The family was still sitting at the kitchen table, except there was no sight of Maggie or the pets. Shortly after, the family goes to visit Bart's grave, and when they get there, they actually discover that his carcass was never buried, but it was lying in front of his own gravestone instead, still looking the same from when it fell out of the plane that first day. So still realistic and super gory. The family starts crying again, but they eventually stop and just stare at Bart's body. Homer tells a joke at this part, but from how bad the quality is, you actually couldn't tell what he was saying apparently. The camera then zooms out to show tombstones of every guest star the Simpson would ever have. And apparently this is towards the future too. But for all the guest stars who had already died, their death dates were correct, but for all the guest stars who hadn't died yet, their death dates were listed all on the same exact date. Later, a former friend watched it with the author, but he said he saw it completely differently, with one exception. There was a seemingly live news report from June 6, 2013. In complete monotone, he recited the details of millions of people dying in their sleep, some of them waking up for a few seconds first, rambling incoherently about something that people could only piece together if they had something to do with nightmares, basically. They didn't know what these people were talking about, but then they would die. I'm sure you can figure out what day was on the tombstones of the current alive celebrities at the end of the episode. It was the exact same date that that news broadcast was happening. There was one difference too. The joke that Homer told was completely clear in this guy's version. When he zooms in on Homer's face while he's looking at Bart, apparently he says, if only we were all that lucky, which is just like, what the fuck? And yeah, that is that is that creepypasta. Apparently, Matt Groening himself has come to deny this. 
I don't know, bro. Like, I've seen some weird shit that people be writing episodes for, and it just never gets published. So maybe it's true. Maybe Matt Groening is right. It's not true. Who knows? But that's all for that one. Doug's Real Life. Doug's Real Life is a theory which was, for some weird reason, also originally created by K.I. Simpson. Now, they start by saying that Doug was one of the original three Nicktoons. It said, it seems like a pretty normal show about the challenges of a young boy faced in his daily life, but he always got a weird feeling from it. Compared to other kids shows at the time, Doug seemed more negative and anxiety centered, which if you've seen the show, I could agree on that. Doug was always worried about something, and in most episodes, he would have fantasies of everybody he knew cruelly laughing at him due to whatever problems he was facing that week or that episode. You know how it goes. Doug always came through in the end though and every episode ended with him writing in his journal about how he had overcome his blown out of proportion problems. This is all coming from the author's perspective. They state in 2005, I began to have dreams about the show for no apparent reason. I cannot remember the details, but they made me want to see it again. The show had not even been in reruns for years at that point, so I could not think of any way on how to watch it. And this is before streaming platforms and all that. Now, to my surprise, it came back for one week in the fall of 2005, airing at 6 a.m. on weekdays, and I watched it for all five days. The first four were episodes that I remembered, but they didn't sync up with my memories perfectly. It had been a while, so he just chalked it up to flaws in their memory. The Friday episode, though, was something I was positive that I had never seen before. This is all coming from him. It started with a normal intro with the line drawings, but characters never appeared. All right, it was just instead the lines. The lines continued as normal, reacting as if normal characters were there, even though we know they're not. Now, once the intro ended, it showed Doug in a dark room, writing in his journal. He was not narrating his writing like he usually did. He just silently wrote for about a whole minute. The screen then faded out, and the usual episode title screen appeared. Yet there was no skit this time, they were just giant letters forming the title, Doug's Real Life. The episode opened with Doug eating breakfast. Now apparently he was giving a voiceover about how there was some big test he had neglected studying for and his family was having just a normal conversation and then the screen just started flashing. Now the flashes seemed to be showing something but they didn't last long enough for the author to actually figure out what they were trying to reveal. Now Doug left his house and begins walking to school. During this stroll, he has one of his fantasies about his life being ruined. Mrs. Wingo announced that Doug had flunked the test and the entire class starts laughing at him, their heads swirling around Doug. This went on for longer than most of the fantasies and the laughter sounded way crueler than usual, almost like the last theory how it sounded way more real. When Doug got to school, the screen flashed again. This time it stayed on the new image, or rather the new animation style. Many objects had changed colors, mainly darker, and it resembled almost like a negative film. Now, Doug was walking through the school hallways, which was full of kids who had never been seen on the show before. These are just all new people. No one paid attention to him at all. Now, after he gets to his desk, the animation switched back to normal. Suddenly, for no reason, the scene changed to after school. Doug was walking home, worrying to himself about the test, and upon reaching his house, his dog, Porkchop, greeted him. Shout out Porkchop, guys, real one. Doug began talking to him until the screen flashed. Porkchop turned into a hunk of rotting meat and Doug's house became decrepit and broken down. Doug went into his house and acted as if he was talking to someone, though it was completely deserted. After interacting with invisible people for a while, he sat down on an empty table. The screen flashed again and Doug's family was there with him just eating dinner. Now, the phone rang and Doug's mom actually answered it. Doug instantly thought it was his teacher telling them about him flunking the test since Doug had fantasies about his parents yelling at him for failing. In it, they grew to be gigantic and their faces became twisted and dark red. You can probably picture this in your head. The screen flashed back to the empty house. Doug was crying and apologizing, but there was nobody else in the room basically. Nobody was there. He went up to his bedroom which was completely empty except for a book and a pencil. Doug picked up the book and starts writing, you know, he writes in a journal. But he narrated this time. I can't tell which one of them is real. Sheesh. It sounds to me like Doug is fucked up in the head, cuz no bullshit. Like, yo, it sounds like you got some serious schizophrenia going on right there. Um, bro, honestly, if that's not real, that should be an episode. That would be fucking fire, yo. Oh my god. Like, that's like a that's like Bojack 
horseman level of fucking writing, bro. That would be that would be a crazy episode if that's true. Anyways, that one pretty depressing to be real, but we're moving on to the next one. Tom and Jerry, the Lost Cartoons. The 13 Tom and Jerry shorts made by Czechoslovakian director Gene Deitch are infamous for their poor quality and rather disturbing nature, featuring super bad sound effects and animations that gave the violence a way more realistic feel. Now, some have speculated that Deitch didn't like the concept behind Tom and Jerry and was pressured into making them, and wanted to make the people who watched his take on it feel bad for liking them. What many people don't know is that Deitch was originally signed on to make more than the 13 episodes that the public has access to. Desperate to get out of his contract, he made one more of Tom and Jerry shorts than few have ever seen. Alright, so this is his last one. It was called Tom's Basement. It opened up with Tom in a typical Tom and Jerry house. His owner was the fat, angry guy from the other Deitch shorts, and Tom's owner seemed even angrier than him in his other appearances. The first scene is him stomping on Tom's tail in a very realistic and painful looking way because Tom was sleeping by the basement door for basically no reason. The owner yells at Tom to never go down there and Tom is clearly terrified and runs away to another room. Our view stays in the room by the basement door and we see Jerry come out of a mouse hole. He looks truly grotesque, far more off model than the other Deitch shorts. He even gets an evil look on his face and follows Tom into the next room. Now, the next few minutes are fairly formulaic. Jerry repeatedly manages to trick Tom into chasing him into the basement door a few times, but each time the owner catches Tom, he inflicts a painful looking injury on him, which stays with Tom even after the scenes end. After three beatings, Tom is bruised all over, bleeding in a couple places and limping on a broken leg. Which, to be fair, isn't that crazy for Tom and Jerry? I mean, you see them, they're on crutches all the time. They're getting their ass whooped in Tom and Jerry. Like, they, they really beat each other's ass. But apparently with Deitch's rendition of it, it is a lot more gory and it looks way more realistic is what they're trying to get at. After this, Tom starts to literally beg Jerry not to bother him anymore. But he's not really talking. He's crying and mumbling. And you can tell what he's doing by his body language. Jerry just laughs at him and pushes him back to the basement door. The owner catches Tom again and goes completely ballistic. The camera zooms in on his face, changes color and distorts as he yells at Tom in a much louder voice than any other sound in the whole cartoon, and it seemed like Jerry had finally decided to take pity on Tom. He picked up a knife that was lying around and stabs the owner in the leg really graphically, alright? Like, this shows everything apparently. Tom opens up the basement door and they carry the owner's body down the stairs. There were dozens of other bodies down there, decaying and showing signs of violent deaths. Tom and Jerry shake hands and it seems like they've triumphed over the serial killer. But Jerry gets an evil look in his face again and Tom says in that ghostly deep voice, Don't you believe it? Jerry stabs Tom, killing him, throwing his body into the pile, and the last shot is Jerry putting up a for sale sign on the yard of the house, laughing, clearly planning on doing all this all again. So apparently the serial killer was Jerry the entire time, stacking up, literally stacking up bodies, and yeah, like, I don't know, hiding them in the basement. Apparently the owner must have known something about it, or he was in on it, because if he's trying to keep Tom out of the basement, I don't see another reason for that besides like, bro already knows about the bodies, but now it's like, okay, is it the owner's bodies? Is it Jerry's? Like, I don't know. It's all very, very confusing, but apparently that is Deitch's last episode, never released, uh, never been published anywhere that people have actually found ready availability for. Um, and if that's true, it's very fucked up. Now, possibly the weirdest part about this entire story is the person who originally created this theory is none other than K.I. Simpson, the exact same person who created the other two in this exact video. Uh, I didn't go off of like this guy's name or anything. It just so happened that the three weird subjects that I picked for this were all created by the exact same dude. And I don't know, like... K.I. Simpson, I get that's probably just like a fake name for publishing reasons or whatever, but like, bro, I need to figure out who the fuck this guy is. This guy's brain, like, if he just creates these theories by himself, you know what I mean? Like, you gotta have some fucking, you gotta have something wrong in your head, cuz no bullshit, like, I don't know what to say. 
I, I think some fucked up shit sometimes, you feel me? But like, bro, I don't think I could ever come up with something like this intricate and that is like somewhat believable too. Like, I don't know. K.I. Simpson, I feel like somebody's got to investigate this dude. Maybe one day I'll have to just look into this person and see who the fuck it actually is. Um, I probably will do another one of these videos just about cartoon theories or creepypastas, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to have to keep an eye out on the authors because like, bro, this guy's name was popping up way too much for it to be a coincidence. You feel me? Like, I don't know, man. Correlation isn't causation, but at the same time, too much correlation because, you know what I mean? It's, it's a little sketchy. Anyways, if you like the video, uh, like, subscribe, all that shit. Uh, stay safe. Stay dangerous.